Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be playing another episode of Mass Effect 3. Last episode was absolutely mind-blowing. Right now, on the Normandy, we have, as part of our squad, a Prothean dating back 50,000 years ago. We got to witness the fall of the Protheans, what happened with this soldier Prothean, and we've been learning a lot from Javin. Once again, everything that I thought I knew about this game has completely been flipped upside down on its head. And honestly, I'm loving every second of it. He has a bit of a more spicy side. He goes on and on about how primitive species are now flying ships and making decisions and ruling entire governments. And it's just very, very interesting to talk to him. And honestly, I can't wait to learn a little bit more about him. It's very easy to relate the Protheans to the Roman Empire in that sort of way where they look down upon other people, but it's just because they want everyone to be strong. It's pretty much survival of the fittest. And he makes that very, very clear, especially when he talks about the lizard people and the Asari and how they've come to where they've come now. I don't think that he was what Liara expected to be. I'm sure if we would have gotten a scientist Prothean over a military Prothean, Liara would probably be a little less taken back, but you can kind of tell in some of his responses that Liara is just like, what's happening and with his arrival also started my downfall of losing hope and spiraling and feeling helpless talking to Jarvin he has this like sixth sense where he can sense what people are feeling he can sense and read minds it seems and he can touch something and feel and know what has happened there prior it's very very amazing and also a little bit mind-blowing knowing that they the protheans with all of their abilities all of their buildup of civilization a technology and being in tune with themselves they still were not able to defeat the reapers he said something that kind of put things into perspective for me um talking about how he was fighting the reapers even since he was born and it's crazy that still they are trying to end the world in a way it can be a little bit uplifting to hear this because they're not getting away with it there has been stalling and they haven't gotten their plan completely 100% yet. They've been held off long enough. Hopefully, we will be able to hold them off again this time. So I'm trying to be a little bit more optimistic today as my voice cracks. <laughs> I'm not sure how much that will work, but I do plan on hopping straight into one of the priority missions to rescue that Primark that can hopefully help us with figuring out how to get the Crucible back online. I'm ready to hop in today. I'm excited to go to a Turian world. I have a very strong suspicion that possibly we could run into Garrus today, seeing as how it is his home world that we are going to. I'm not 100% sure and I don't want to get my hopes up, but how how cool would it be if we do run into Garrus today? I'm excited to get my sniper bro back and I hope I'm not like getting my hopes up here, but that's just kind of what's been jogging through my mind is, are we gonna see Garrus? Because we are going to the Turian homeworld that is currently very much under attack. So it's probably gonna be a deep episode. It might be exciting to see Garrus. I am very, very ready to hop in today. So without further ado, let's go. I will say that the radio in our new Crabbins quarters absolutely sucks. There are no good songs on it. I've tried. I've sat here for about 10 minutes trying to get a good song to come on. And it's all this techno weirdness. And I feel like an old lady that's like, give me back my, my give me back my music. <laughs> give me back my MTV music. I'm sorry to trouble you again so soon, but Surely you must know something about the device. Anything would help. It was supposed to be our miracle, but we were fragmented by that point. Communication had been severed. I put no faith in it. All we could trust were the weapons in our hands. And you really know nothing about the catalyst? I already told you, Asari. No. I'm sorry. It's just so much depends on this. I know that. More than you do. Now please, let me be. I'm still recovering. Of course. I apologize. 
Liara probably has him on speed dial. He's also made an absolute mess of his room. I don't remember all this crap being on the floor. For me, it was only yesterday. Our empire spanned the galaxy. Now we are only a myth. I'm recovering my strength. I will be ready soon. All right, so he's just hanging out in here, recovering. I mean, rightfully so. He's been asleep for like 50,000 years. It's crazy. Okay, so I think that I'm going to go out and do some planet scanning today. Um, usually, at least with my planet scanning and ME2, I cut out all of it because it gets super tedious and I feel like it takes up a good chunk of the video that you guys would rather just see like dialogue and action and lore. So I'm going to go do that and then I will come back and tell you guys what I have found. But my plan for going out and scanning is to do like a section of the galaxy map so i will probably do like a section each episode depending on how much time it takes but i was thinking um since we have to go here i'll probably just do like this section but this is what i mean by like section so i'll do these two and then next time i'll do like these three I might do the one over here since we already kind of have it done already so that I'm doing three because I don't think there's any in Serpent Nebula. I will go back and check, but I don't think so. So yeah, that's my plan and I'll be back to show you what kind of war assets I picked up. Okay, so I spent much longer than I thought I would and turns out that Anos Bassin doesn't have anything right now. I'm not sure if that will change if we start to open up some more stuff. Um, it's hard to believe that the star map is only this when it's like sectioned off this way. So I'm kind of assuming that eventually we will get more, um, more systems. I also noticed in the journal there was something that we picked up from the Citadel where it was like a Prothean ruin or a Reaper beacon or it was some sort of like artifact um, that we need to go find and give back to whoever kicked it off. Um, and I could not find that place. So I'm guessing that it will open up eventually, maybe after we do more of the main mission or... Um, or what, but I find it hard to believe that it's going to be this empty. So I just went around and 100% 100% completed the scanning in every area that we have so far so that if any new area pops up, um, I can just go ahead and 100% it like I have for these. The only places I didn't find anything was the Serpent Nebula and the Anos Basin, but everything else is 100%. I got all of the war assets from those. Um, we can go take a look at what we picked up too from the war assets. See the feed from Palavin? It's brutal. I've been amazed the Turians are holding it. The birds don't quit when things get ugly. I'll give them that. That's where we're gonna head to, Paladin. I have a feeling it's gonna be hard to see the Turians getting absolutely annihilated. Turians are known for like being super strong and having really good military. So it's hard to even imagine that they're getting absolutely annihilated. Um, but yep, we've picked up a, a bunch now. I think we were sitting at like maybe 700 before. I could be wrong, but yeah, we picked up some points. Um, in Alliance, we got the 103rd Marine Division, Alliance First Fleet, the Spec Ops Team Delta, Alliance Cruiser Shanghai, the Naval, Naval, Ex Naval, sorry, Naval Exploration Flotilla, and Eden Prime Support. I think Eden Prime Support was probably from our last mission back in Eden Prime. I don't think I picked that one up. Um, but we have Prothean Data Files and Javelin Missile Launchers. And we have the Turian 79th Flotilla as well. So we're we're getting up there still. Chances of success are very, very poor. Obviously, we're on episode four. <laughs> and this is the first time I've actually gone out and done gone out and done some scanning. So I'm not surprised that we didn't just automatically reach the minimum. Um, but we're getting closer now, which is good. 
So I think it's time to go ahead and head out. Oh, I did pick up these also. I thought these were codex entries. So I picked up Citadel Pillars of Strength, a Batarian artifact um, was recovered from the kite's nest. Find someone on the Citadel who can use them. Oh, okay, so maybe just from scanning, um, we can find it, but I didn't find anything with the name Strike Abyssal. So I'm guessing that will be a system that will open up eventually. But it looks like we did pick up two artifacts just by scanning. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So we have two that we can drop off at the Citadel um, whenever we head back over there. But we're going to do Priority Palavin today. And I'm excited to kind of dive deeper into the main story and figure out if this Primarch Fedorian can actually help us with the Crucible, and if so, how? I feel like it's going to be really hard going to Palavin and seeing the Turians in dis in distress. It's just, I'm not really looking forward to seeing another planet just absolutely annihilated by Reapers, especially after my emotional outburst um, on last episode. So the overlying undertones of Mass Effect 3 are very dark. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna be there for everyone. <laughs> we're gonna try to remain optimistic, but it's definitely gonna get hard. So on that note, let's head over to, to Palavin and Commander. maybe we will run into Garrus. I'm very much hoping that we run into Garrus because I could really use a friendly, familiar face. All right, so we're going over to Mene, which is actually the moon of Palavin. Palavin's largest moon has been shrouded in secrecy since the dawn of the Turian space age. During the Krogan rebellions, the hierarchy classified nearly all data on Mene and its sister moon, Nanus, because they feared the Krogan could use the moons as weapons by smashing them into Palavin's surface. However, some information has leaked out. Images of Turian bases where personnel walk without enviro suits indicate advanced infrastructure, likely a network of subterranean tunnels with powerful mass effect field generators that retain heat and atmosphere over swaths of the surface. The Reaper's plans for bombarding the bases were met with fierce resistance by the Turian fleet and the moon's anti-aerospace defenses. With their easy victory stalled, the Reapers deployed a variety of ground units to take the bases one at a time. The Turians have the advantage on the moon, but the Reapers have the patience to slowly grind them down. With every base captured, the Reapers deny the Turian fleet another place to repair or refuel. Oh, this is terrible. So I'm guessing all of this is classified because of what it said earlier. The hierarchy classified nearly all data on Mene, but it's sister moon. Yeah. Interesting. Also, um, before we head into orbit, there were some game changes that I wanted to make that I think are super important and I keep forgetting about. So I'm going to turn combat difficulty up to hardcore. In two and one, I was on, um, I think it was called Veteran. Pretty sure it was called Veteran. Well, that doesn't exist in Mass Effect 3. And I didn't realize until I read through one of your guys' comments um, that it switched me to normal. And I thought that it was too easy, but I was like, eh, maybe I'm just getting used to the game or whatever. So we're going to switch that to hardcore. Um, we're not going to go for insanity, but, and I know it's super, super far away, but I thought I would mention it because I am, as you guys know, loving this game. I think that for November next year, I am going to replay one of my favorite games. So I have not decided which one I love the most yet, one, two, or three, and I'm going to replay it on Insanity. And I want to do this on a stream. So like on Twitch, probably, since I don't think I'm ever going to live stream on YouTube, but never say never. Um, so that's my plan to celebrate N7 since I did not really get to celebrate this year because I was scared of spoilers. I was literally just like shielding my eyes from Twitter most of N7 um, because I was so worried about spoilers. So that is my plan to play Insanity eventually um, in this game. And I think it'll be super, super fun. So if you guys are looking forward to it, mark your calendar an entire year from now because that is my... That is my plan for next year. Uh, 
Okay, so another thing that I learned is that all of the armor has bonuses. It's not just like, uh, ooh, that looks pretty type of thing. So um, I'm gonna go through. I wonder why I can't pick Javik. Maybe because he's still resting? Um, so I'm obviously gonna pick James and Liara. I'm going to look through their stats and put some abilities in there, change out their guns and all that good stuff, and I will see you after. Okay, so for me, I upgraded my fitness. I think fitness and um, disruptor ammo are going to be the ones that I try to focus on from here on out or operational mastery. Um, so these are the ones that I would really like to max out before I start touching on sabotage or stick your grenade or any of the other ones. For Liara, I gave her the suit that gave her like a the recharge rate was decreased. Um, and I'm kind of focusing on like singularity and warp for her. I would like to pump more into pure biotic. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. With her extra points, I did actually upgrade a bit in there. So I'm probably going to start focusing on pure biotic before anything else for Liara. And for James, same thing. I'm going to do arms mastery for him, try to max that out and leave everything else the way that it is for now. Um, I think I accidentally hit like the auto button for him. And that's why his are all like kind of wonky <laughs> i feel like arms master should be like one of the first things but that's just my opinion and i gave him the suit that gave him shields with the monocle the like monopoly guy thing with the camo it's funny because i talked about that on him like it fits his style a lot so um yeah i think that'll be that'll be a good thing for everyone An army? There's so many of them. Come on, take down one Reaper, just one of them. Do it. This is awesome. friend there holy yes. hell they're getting decimated strongest military in the galaxy and the reapers are obliterating it was it like this on earth yes shepherd i'm so sorry yeah commander the lc is getting swarmed james open that hatch this is bad Clear the landing zone. Okay. Whoops. Hang on. Um. Oh, I think I forgot to tell you guys, but I'm going to try out shotgun and sniper. I saw some comments that they work well together, so I'm going to give it a go today. I've always been a pistol, sniper, revolver, sniper type of gal, so we'll see um, how it goes. Let me just make sure everything looks good to me. I think I might move that there. That there. Okay. Get in, get out. Roger that. Oh, 
Oops, that was close. My bad. Jeez. All right, let me look for ammo real quick. Shotgun, uh, shotgun, shotgun good. <laughs> shotgun good. That was pretty cool. I just need to make sure that I'm close. Um, used to shooting the pistol, so. Soldier, which way to your commanding officer? Straight ahead and around the corner, past the first barricade. <gasps> Whoa. I'm always blown away when we're like on a planet or a moon that's near more planets and moons. I don't know why. I think it's just, it's amazing. Could you imagine what it looks like to stand on like Earth's moon and look down at Earth? It probably looks so amazing. I couldn't even, oh, I get chills just thinking about it. This also looks terrible. They're getting annihilated down here. commanding officer oh, i wonder if that's gonna be garris i feel like it it has to be garris right gosh i'm so excited to see if it is him i don't want to get my hopes up i'm gonna stop talking about it all right let's check all these the reinforcements haven't arrived areas ground report knowledge of the terrain is our only advantage here and that's not going to last forever if they keep throwing their forces at us We'll hold this area as long as we can. I'm linking my transponder to the life signal monitoring system of the unit suits. If it goes out, send another here ASAP. Oh, nice. We leveled up. Um, all right. Not enough points to do anything yet. Let me just make sure there's nothing in here. They're struggling. Ooh, a viper. Um, it's exciting that we have a gun with uh, a bigger capacity and fire rate, but you guys know how I feel about anything other than a single fire for sniper rifles. Damage is just not there. Look at the decrease in damage. Look at the decrease in accuracy. Granted, we are getting accuracy because of probably this compensator, um, but nah, nah, no thank you. We love the Mantis. All right. This looks like it'll probably be the commander, no? Tabestic, get your men up on that north barricade. Yes, sir. Sergeant Bardas, find a way to get that comm tower operational. Sir. General. Commander Shepard, heard you were coming, but I didn't believe it. General Corinthus. I've come to get Primarch Fedorian. Primarch Fedorian is dead. His shuttle was shot down an hour ago as it tried to leave the moon. That's gonna complicate things. Great. How bad is it, General? We just lost about 400 men in half an hour. Jeez. We set up camps on this moon as an advanced position to flank the enemy. A sound strategy. Just... Irrelevant. Exactly. The sheer force of the Reapers seems to make them immune to that sort of tactic. The Primarch and his men found that out the hard way. Oh, man. I'm sorry. What are we going to do now? I'm sorry. I hear he was a good man. And a friend. He Aww. would have been an outstanding diplomat. So what happens now? The Turian hierarchy provides very clear lines of succession. Right. General Corinthus. With such heavy casualties, it's hard for me to be certain who the next Primarch is. Palavan Command will know. However, at the moment, 
Contacting them is impossible. The comm tower is out. Husks are swarming that area. We can't get close enough to repair it. Don't worry, General. I'll get your tower operational. Okay. Thank you, Commander. I'll take care of things on this end. All right, let's go. All right, so comms tower back on. Primark Fedorian's dead. I see the comm tower. To the left of the main barricade in front of Palavin. Oh yeah, let's this go. one, I'm guessing. Oh man, so now they're gonna what? It's like next in line or something? So we're gonna find the next in command. But how are they gonna help us with the crucible? I thought it was like. How many fighters are in for repair? 29, sir. Have the crew make only critical level eight repairs. Every serviceable fighter is in the air. ASAP. Got it? Yes, sir. Man, they're getting annihilated. It's awful. We're so short compared to them. This is like me in real life. <laughs> this is how I feel with like literally everybody. I'm 4'10 and it's awful. It's so funny. I look so little compared to them. <laughs> so immersive. I saw something over here. Oh, nice. Magazine upgrade, data pads, credits. Very nice. I think we have enough ammo, but let me just make sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, was there anything else up here? Sorry, something caught my eye. <gasps> Ooh, a weapon bench, nice. So let's see if we got any better modifications. Okay, that's the best for our gun right now. Um, I can't, oh, okay, I can modify theirs too. So nothing for him. He's got his shotgun stuff. I think we picked up a an extended mag. Yeah. What's this? Allows bullets to pierce 0. 0.50 meters thick objects, but at 60% reduced damage. 60% reduced damage. Ignore 25% of defenses on armored targets. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I guess so. All right, nice. Got some upgrades. We must be about to go through hell if they're giving us all of this. This isn't good. Up and on your left. This is the main barricade. Okay. Jeez. This is insane. All right, med kit, another data pad. From Commander Hexner Supplies. They sent us winter gear. Not sure what they thought that we'd do with this kind of gear here, but I suppose we could thank the spirits nonetheless. The power sources can be cannibalized and converted to power our combat gears, filtering units instead, at least. It'll be nice not to have those clogging up anymore. They're probably just, like, allocating supplies anywhere that they can at this point. Everything is so... Is in such disarray and mayhem that they probably just don't even know where to send anything to anymore. They're probably like, Moon, it's probably cold there. Mmm, we got a shotgun too. A little less damage, better capacity, and fire rate. I think that with the modifications though, we could probably get this shotgun back to the damage that we had originally. Let's check. Wait. Eh, yeah, it's a little bit lower. Um, but not, not much. Capacity is always a good thing on a shotgun as, as well as fire rate, so. That is an upgrade. Let's change James's to put his modifications on. Nice. As you wish. Did Liara just say as you wish? I will. <laughs> Princess Bride, as you wish. Okay, I'm guessing this is the gate he was talking about. Oh, look 
at the... Oh, they're still fighting. There's the comms tower, I'm guessing. Husks at the tower overwhelmed us. Good luck. Aww. All right. So we're probably about to see some stuff. are sticky today sometimes i forget to blink when i'm in the middle of combat <laughs> okay so that's it it's easy we can't repair it from this panel oh okay not so easy oh we gotta split up um, I don't know much about James. I think he's more of a hunky chunky pew pew guy. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna trust Liara for repairs on this one. She's pretty tech savvy. Liara, see if you can repair it. I'll go up and have a look. If you can keep husks from climbing up behind me, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, let's keep the let's keep the Here hunky chunky dude with us. Hell yeah! Let's take him. I think I heated that a little bit too far. that was going to happen. All right. You guys are good. Let me grab some more ammo real quick. to go back all right that was crazy it wasn't too bad but it did get a little heated there for a minute <laughs> all right so i think i'm supposed to go back over here oh no is he dead maybe he's just sleeping I'm gonna say he's sleeping. It's too sad to say that he died. <laughs> Just chilling there. I am a little bit disappointed that it's not Garrus who's in charge of the teams here. I wonder if we're even gonna run into him now. I feel like I got my hopes up now. 
What have you got? As your partner said, succession is usually simple. But right now, the hierarchy's in chaos. So many dead are MIA. I need someone, I don't care who, as long as they can get us the Turian resources we need. Yeah, next in line, whoever, somebody. I'm on it, Shepard. <gasps> we'll find you the Primarch. Is that Garrus? Garrus? Vicarian, sir. I didn't see you arrive. At ease, General. Good to see you again. I thought you'd be on Palavin. If we lose this moon, we lose Palavin. I'm the closest damn thing we have to an expert on Reaper forces, so I'm advising. Oh, it's so good James, to have Garrus back. Garrus he helped me stop the Collectors. He's a hell of a soldier. Lieutenant, good to see you too, Liara. Good to see you in one piece, Garrus. General Corinthus filled me in. We know who we're after. Okay. Palavan Command tells me that the next Primarch is General Adrian Victus. Okay. Victus. His name's crossed my desk. Know him, Garrus? I was fighting alongside him this morning. Lifelong military. Gets results. Popular with his troops. Not so popular with military command. Has a reputation for playing loose with accepted strategy. Playing loose? How? What do you mean? On Tetris, during the uprisings, his squad discovered a Salarian spy ring about the same time the Turian Separatists did. Rather than neutralize the ring, he fell back. He even gave up valuable fortifications which the Rebels took. Then the Rebels attacked the Salarians, and when both groups had worn each other down, Victus moved back in. Didn't lose a man. Bold mm -hmm. strategy. But wild behavior doesn't get you advanced up the meritocracy. True. Primarch Victus. That should be something to see. It's a pretty, yeah, like he said, a bold strategy. I mean, it worked for them, but what about everybody else? He pretty much threw other people under the bus for his own success. But in the end of the day, it worked. And um, like the other general said, sometimes when you're dealing with Reapers, you have to do things that are different. So, all I'm, yeah, I just want to know, can I trust him? You think he can get the job done? We both know conventional strategy won't beat the Reapers. Right now, he could be our best shot. And I trust him. Okay, let's get him on the shuttle and get out of here. Commander! Shepard, come in! Can this wait, Joker? We're in the middle of a war zone. We've got a situation on the Normandy, Commander. It's like she's possessed. What? Shutting down systems, powering up weapons. I can't find the source. What the I heck? need the Normandy standing by. We may have to bug out. Should I go back and take a look? Do it. Garrus, you said you were with Victus this morning? Yeah, but we got separated. He went to bolster a flank that was breaking. Could be anywhere out there. We're trying to raise him, Commander. Incoming harvester! Get <gasps> it for the airfield! It's that bird thing! What did he call it? A harvester? Ew! Ew, it's belly! General, tell Primarch Victus we'll rendezvous here. In the meantime, let's go take care of whatever that thing dropped off. Dropped off? Coming, Garrus? Yes! Right Sniper you. bros! Sniper bros! Let's go! Oh, it's so good to have Garrus back. Let's go. I'm excited. I'm so happy to have him back. Oh, I started getting a little bit, like, teary-eyed. I definitely got a little bit of goosebumps there. Something about just, like, running into old... Like, Garrus has been with us since ME1. He just... It's always so exciting to see teammates that we've known for so long. All right, so I'm guessing, did he say main gate? No, no, no. I don't know what he said. I was too excited about Garrus being here. I don't think I'm supposed to go back this way, right? Okay, well, they're not letting me out, so that's a no. What about over here? Okay. Breathing so hard? Atmosphere's a little thinner than I'm used to, is all. 
Maybe you should put your helmet on. Adrenaline's better than oxygen any day. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Ooh, this looks bad. Defend airfield. <gasps> Yo, see? What those reapers look like Turians? They do. What the hell? All right, um, first things first, now that we have Garrus back, we're gonna have to give him all of his points back. And then I'm gonna put his concussive shot up in there. All right, cool. What the heck is that thing? Why does it look like a Turian? <gasps> wow! I was so delayed on that. That was unfortunate. Oh, I missed. All right, there's another one of those dudes. got an upgrade. Oops. Oh, dang, I missed. I think we're done here. Okay, nice. Whew, that was crazy. Is there any ammo out here that I can take? What the heck were those crazy Turian things? The Reaper called Harbin. Marauder? Marauders are harvested Turians that command and protect other Reaper troops. The lean armored creatures present a significant threat in and of themselves but they are especially dangerous when leading a Reaper task force. Alliance Marines have observed marauders fortifying husks and cannibals by enveloping them in a ribbon of energy that forms a scabby shell of armor. Dang. For this reason, when Alliance soldiers encounter a marauder alongside husks or cannibals, standing orders are to target the marauder first. Okay. Wow, harvested Turians. Dang, they're just like evolving into all of these crazy things. Remember when it was just like the husks? And then it was like the Harbinger came with all of his crazy variants and then cannibals and cannibals are husks, husks or are we've had husks, marauders now marauders. What else are they gonna throw at us? Good gosh. All right, I'm just gonna kind of like look around and loot for a second. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Ooh, what's this? Credits, nice. All right. So I think we have to, what do we have to report back to the commander guy? Shepard, I didn't. Come in. Go ahead. Still trying to raise the Primarch, but we've got trouble back here at the main barricade. Oh no, okay. If the Reapers breach it, we're done. Okay. On my way. Oh dang. <gasps> no, that guy died. The one that we literally just talked to. Whoa, a turret? This is fun! <gasps> Let's go! 
It's like the Pijack game, but better because they're Reapers. Oh, he got up. He's up here. Okay. Run, gotta reload. Run, 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 run. I don't have any cover over here. James down. Let's go. A brute. You gotta gotta reload. Is everyone dead? Garris, help me out, my man. What's the word of the Primarch? <sighs> Still can't get a stable comm link. Okay, I'm going on foot. Shepard out. Garris, take me to the last place you saw Victus. All right, that was crazy. A brute. I was kidding when I said, what else are they going to make? The Reaper called Har The Brute is a hulking amalgamation of Turian and Krogan victims of the Reapers. Oh my god. Because tissue from dextroprotein species like the Turians is incompatible with levoprotein species like the Krogan, implants regulate the Brute's body chemistry to combat organ rejection. It is the fusion of Turian military skill and Krogan blood rage that makes the Brute such a formidable enemy, capable of destroying armored vehicles to get to the soldiers inside. Troops are advised to keep their distance and, whenever possible, not engage a Brute alone. That's insane. Garrus Vakarian is a noted Turian sharpshooter and combat engineer. He was born on Palavan and became a Citadel security officer like his father, but left the force when Superior shut down his investigation into the rogue specter Saren Arterius. The Carrion eventually discovered that Saren had been indoctrinated by the Reaper known as Sovereign. The Carrion eventually found his way to the criminal haven of Omega and assumed the name Archangel. There, he and a small group of operatives worked to disrupt the settlement's powerful mercenary groups until Shepard recruited him, the Turian narrowly survived the second Normandy's attack on the Collectors. More recently, Vicarian has become the head of a Turian task force focused on preparing for the Reaper invasion. It's so good to have Garrus back. 
As for the Reapers, um, and that husk, or whatever, it, the brute that is, like, a cross between Turian and Krogan, it's just, it's absolutely wild. I was kidding when I said, what more are they gonna throw at us? Because that is a wild mix. Like, your best military species and your best blood rage, like, I just want to annihilate everything species together. It's... It's crazy. All right, is James still down? Cause it's telling me. Oh no, he's alive. Okay. How far? Should be pretty quick, unless we find trouble. All right, one second. Um, before we leave this area, I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything, cause we were pretty much flailing around over here, just trying to, <laughs> just trying to make it. Um, it was very intense for a second there. Okay, we can't hop up there. All right, I'm ready now. Is it this way? there my dad a sister how bad is it three million lost the first day oh, five the second geez. how's your military holding up look around that should give you some idea are you putting up a good fight for now but how long does it take before the fight's kicked out of you if they'd only listen to your warnings about the reapers we might have been ready maybe hard to figure how you prepare for something like this that's true very very true but at least heeding my warning forever ago um would have you know we'd at least be a little bit more prepared we would have been able to make the repairs to the ships knowing what we know about reaper ships and their laser beams and their crazy strength we would have we would have just known so much more and been able to prepare at least a little bit but like he said i mean the protheans had forever Got more back here to get ready and they still weren't able to hold them off shit i hate those things and new york is crawling with the creepy bastards uh, I never should have left Earth. My God. <laughs> it's gonna be bad all over. Leaving the fight just pisses me off. But you're here asking Victus to do the same thing. True. Leave the fight to make nice in some boardroom. Oh, this summit that's is the true. only chance we've got. None of us is beating the Reapers alone. I was literally just talking about that too in the journal. Um, with you guys about how he's probably not going to want to leave the fight. Especially that it's not like Fedorin um, anymore. Oh my god, that bug thing. Soldier, you okay? Yes, sir. We'll make it. Have you seen General Victus? Half hour ago, and it's south. Okay, good luck. Yes, sir. Okay, so they have seen him. How many troops in that crash? 50? Mm. 75? Not sure. Sounds right. Hard to see a beautiful ship like that go down. Not to mention the men serving on her. Yeah. Yeah. We should go. They said the Primarch was headed south. All right. How many more times is that going to happen today? I was literally just looking at that, wondering the same exact thing. Like, oh my gosh, that entire... Because that was like... I don't know if it was the ship from the opener, but 
when I saw like the entire Turian fleet in the beginning and I was so excited. I was like, maybe they're going to take down one of the Reapers. And then I started to realize like, oh snap, like this is really bad. And I kind of just like got a glimpse of that again in my brain. I was like, man, there were probably a lot of people on there. And then James chimes in and is like, how many people do you think was on? That was kind of weird. <laughs> and then the whole thing with like him not wanting to leave his post. I don't know. I just feel like I think about this game too much, probably. Whoa! That was a little closer than I'd like. I'll stay. That was insane. No survivors. Damn it. Crash like that, it's not surprising. <sighs> okay. longer how far so away Lola, is this dude you really think this summit will work i mean asari salarians where's the krogan and batarians where's the meat it's not that easy the batarians took the first hit when the reapers arrived not much left of them Jeez. and the krogan have never forgiven us for the genophage right turians sterilized them salarians came up with it and the krogan hate them both for it so they won't be joining us too bad I fought with the Krogan. They're tough sons of bitches. Yes, they are. I feel like we're all gonna have to work together um, in this, if there's any chance of survival. I just feel like we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to put our differences aside and work together to defeat the Reapers. There's no like, you take care of your place, I take care of my place, and like, we'll survive that way. Like, we all have to work together. I think that was like my biggest gripe with the council. And I know in the first episode, or I think it was the second episode, I got a lot of flack <laughs> from the comment section about not being happy with the council. And the way that I look at it is like, Shepard has been, you know, in command for a long time. We're a war hero. We survived slash thrived in the Skillian Blitz. And after all of that, and then being instated as a specter and coming out with them about Saren and being right about Saren and protecting the entire Citadel from mass chaos destruction, I feel like we, we are owed a favor, at least now, at least a small one, but yet, every single chance that we get to talk to the council even in mass effect 2 we are shot down we are disregarded we are absolutely disrespected and after a while it's just kind of like what gives and with the council you don't even really know where their jurisdiction lies they're here one minute they're there the next minute they can't seem to come to terms about what they want to do about people at all and it's just, it's so evident that they don't care about anything. And I don't know if that's like fair to say, I'm sure they care about some things, but they're very picky choosy about what they choose to care about. And when it comes to the important matters, when it comes to us talking to them as a specter with the background that we have, like, hey, maybe we're trustworthy now. They still just like, eh, throw a cold shoulder to us. So. That's my reasoning for reacting the way that I did about the council. Sure, scratch your own back, make sure that your planets are secure, all of that good stuff. This is wildly different. This is where we pull out all the stops. This is where we hold hands and we sing kumbaya and we try to look out for one another. And yet still, they're like, oh, let's just make sure that the Citadel stays safe or let's just make sure that this planet stays safe. And, you know, instead of going to the action and going to where they are actually needed so that we can at least slow the deaths a little bit. I mean, like Gary said, 3 million on his planet one day, 5 million on the next. Next, it's probably the same numbers on Earth, if not worse at this point. So how many millions of people are you going to let just lay over and die before we're like, oh, snap, maybe we should send in some reinforcements instead of being like, I, I just, 
I, uh, I struggle because I've seen so many people give me flack about the council and talking badly about them, but I honestly have nothing good to say at this point. Um, I have nothing even remotely good to say because every time that we come to them, we are met with disrespect and disregard and ignorance. And after a while, it's just, it's, I don't enjoy talking to the council. I don't think that, and, and if, you know, when the Citadel does get under attack, which I feel like it's inevitable at this point, who's gonna be the first person that they pick up the phone and they call? It's gonna be Shepard. And they're gonna be like, come help us, come help us, please. And it's just, it's just unfortunate. I feel like it's unfortunate. Krogan Ancient History. We know a lot about the Krogan Ancient History. I dived pretty deep into it in ME2, um, but I wouldn't mind reading this. So let's read through the both of these. The lack of adequately preserved archives presents a significant obstacle to research into ancient Krogan history. Nevertheless, recent archaeological discoveries have shed new light on the topic, revealing a society once rich with cultural, architectural, and artistic accomplishments. Newly discovered ruins reveal that the Krogan had particularly advanced understandings of structural and geotechnician geotechnical engineering as compared to other cultures at similar stages of development. Old Krogan architecture demonstrates seismic loading techniques that would have both resisted earthquakes and diffused the small scale vibrations from vehicles in their sprawling cities. Curiously, however, Tuchanka has little natural tectonic activity. Instead, researchers believe the ancient Krogan were concerned with safe cohabitation with one of the planet's apex predators, Kalros, the mother of the, oh, Thresher Maws. They do cause a lot of earthquakey vibrations. <laughs> Prior to the genophage, Krogan population growth was limited by predation, disease, and war. Even so, the birth rate exploded once the Krogan achieved industrialization, leading to wars over resources and living space. Other species on Tuchanka suffered greatly as the Krogan expanded. When the Krogan ran out of land, they settled into an arms race that ended in nuclear devastation. Tuchanka's relatively short golden age was at an end. It's so sad to hear what they did to their own, their own society and civilization. It's just, it's really sad. But this ancient history may yet aid the modern Krogan. Some of the techniques and technology discovered in the ruins could be used to improve standard colonization equipment, signaling economic renewal for the Krogan at last. Um, and then the Krogan rebellions happened, which pretty much squandered um, that last paragraph. After the Rachni War, the quick breeding Krogan expanded at the expense of their neighbors. Warlords, le Warlords leveraged their veteran soldiers to seize living space, while the council races were still grateful. Over centuries, the Krogan conquered world after world. There was always just one more needed. When the council finally demanded withdrawal from the Asari colony of Lucia, Krogan overlord Kredak stormed off the citadel, daring the council to take their worlds back. But the council had taken precautions. The finest STG operators and Asari huntresses had been drafted into a covert observation force, the Office of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. The specters opened the war with crippling strategic strikes. Krogan planets went dark as computer viruses flooded the extranet. Sabotaged antimatter refineries disappeared in blue-white annihilation. Headquarters stations shattered into orbit-clogging debris, rammed by pre-placed suicide freighters. Still, this only de delayed the inevitable. The war would have been lost if not for the first contact with Turians, who responded to Krogan threats with a prompt declaration of war. Being on the far side of Krogan space from the Council, the Turians advanced rapidly into the light defending Krogan rear areas. The Krogan responded by dropping space stations and asteroids on Turian colonies. Three worlds were rendered completely uninhabitable. This was precisely the wrong approach to take with the Turians. Each is first and foremost a public servant, willing to risk his life to protect his comrades. Rather than increasing public war wariness, Krogan tactics stiffened Turian resolve. The arrival of Turian task forces saved many worlds from the warlords' marauding fleets, but it took the development of the genophage bioweapon to end the war. 
There were decades of unrest after rogue warlords and holdout groups of insurgents refused to surrender or disappeared into the frontier systems to become pirates. It's so upsetting to hear what happened with the Krogans just overall. And that's all that I will say about it. I will, I was gonna say more, but um, I think I learned my lesson in Mass Effect 2 about saying things about this topic. I know that it's a very heated debate and I love talking about gray areas with you guys, but alas, I am on the internet and I will not speak my words about this one um, any more than I already have. So if you guys want to know how I feel about the Krogan rebellions and all of that good stuff, um, go back and rewatch Mass Effect 2 episodes, um, namely the ones with with Malin. So the Battle of Palavin. When Tetris fell, the Turians knew little about the Reapers, except that they wanted to enrage the Turians. Staying calm, the Turians massed in force around Palavin, their homeworld. Fleet Admiral Irix Coronati, in what became known as the 15-minute plan, stationed only two carriers, undaunted and resolute, near the system's relay. When the Reaper fleet emerged, the carriers launched swarms of unmanned fighters and spy drones. These were quickly destroyed, but the drones transmitted vital data on the, on the Reaper's effective range, fleet composition, and exact location. The Turian's other ships then deployed to defend the systems in earnest. Knowing that the Reaper's, last Reaper's weapons had a longer effective range than any of his own, Coronati made a short, daring FTL jump landing his dreadnoughts in the middle of the Reaper fleet. The dreadnoughts then turned to line up their main guns on the Reapers, which also needed to turn fire on the Turians. This ploy used the Reapers' size against them because they couldn't turn faster. The Turian dreadnoughts locked targets first and their concentrated power down several Reaper capital ships. Let's go. The Reapers countered instantly. Their destroyers performed a jump of their own to the skies above Palavin beginning orbital strikes on Turian cities. The Turians forced to defend the planet found themselves in a pinched battle far from the relay, from which emerged a seemingly endless line of Reaper ships. After Mashual, massive casualties, Coronati ordered retreat. The Turians insist that Palavin is not lost. The battle has merely moved to the ground. Reaper troop transports have dumped hordes of husks to capture Palavin's inhabitants, but met with little success. Reaper capital ships are destroying city after city. But much of the Turian fleet is still operable, and the citizenry is heavily armed. The Turians refuse to be intimidated. They're holding their own, but just barely. Biotics is the ability. The Genophage bioweapon was created to end the Krogan rebellions. The Turians fought the Krogan to a standstill but the sheer weight of Krogan numbers indicated they could not be stopped through conventional means. The Turians collaborated with the Salarians to engineer a genetic counter to the Krogan's rapid breeding. The genophage virus replicated by eating key genetic sequences, altering every cell of Krogan physiology, so the Krogan could not use gene therapy to fix the affected tissues. Once a genophage strain could replicate no more, it would starve and die limiting mutation and contamination. In addition, the created genetic flaw is hereditary. The resulting mutation made only one in a thousand Krogan pregnancies carry to term, reducing offspring viability rather than fertility. Krogan warlords fought battles over the females able to carry children to term. The release of the genophage is still controversial and bitterly debated in many circles. I didn't realize that the main reason that they reduced offspring viability rather than overall fertility, which I thought was just a really cruel thing. I thought they were just being cruel and they wanted the Krogans to suffer. Comes to find out um, the genophage virus was created by eating key genetic sequences so that if the Krogan wanted to do something like fertility treatments to get over the genophage, they wouldn't be able to do so. So it really, I mean, it's its super awful and terrible. And yeah, there, there's just no other words to put it other than awful and terrible. But 
it seemed necessary at the time. I thought that they were just doing it out of cruelty. Um, I was always wondering in the back of my mind why they couldn't just decrease the rate of fertility in both men and women. Um, but then they didn't want the chance of them being able to fix it using gene therapy. So that makes a little bit more sense. It's still very sad, but I was always just thinking that it was like a cruel thing, but it's actually very scientifically thought out. Okay. Got lost in the codex. So where am I supposed to go right now? Let's see. Back to General Victus. Oh, General Victus is over here. Okay. because I leveled up. I thought we were about to get like swarmed again. <laughs> okay. Crazy. It's like that feeling of just like helplessness. Seeing a huge reaper. Okay, double time. No Reapers taking this Primarch from me. Right behind you. <sighs> like the last one. All right. Because I think they're probably over here. Yeah, they're firing over here. Okay, clear the camp. Okay. <gasps> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. okay, let's get our sniper out. Grenade? Oh, okay. Garrus is okay. I'm gonna try to take those guys out first. Let's go. Moving to the compound. Okay. Moving. Right behind you. I just want to see if there's anything up here. Nothing. Okay. Am I stuck? Oh, that was weird. Right. There's more this way. <gasps> it's another one of those things. Dang. Okay. its belly and just like dinged off. <laughs> it even made a ding noise. Dang. Nice, let's go. to make sure I'm not like missing any loot back here. I know that sounds silly, but I just want to make sure. We're like in the middle of combat. Okay. Is that a 
another brute? Wait, wasn't there? <gasps> There's two? All right, let's try to take this guy down first. Let's go. Can you drop any the ammo? Nope. Turn up the heat. All right, there is one more brute over here. Thank God he's like stuck over there. All right, he's coming now. of ammo okay all right let's run and get some ammo oh we didn't pick up anything in there i could have sworn i saw some back here yeah yeah yeah. there's some right here okay three bullets okay i'm gonna move up and try to grab some ammo real quick Sounds like it's calming down for a second. I'm just gonna go around and see if there's any loot. This is crazy. No wonder why we got so many upgrades before doing this. Okay. More meds, nice. I think it said General Victus was like in one of these things. Okay. Yeah, that's probably him over there. Keep getting stuck on. Oh, okay. Thought I was stuck again. General Victus? Yes. I'm Commander Shepard of the Normandy. Not uh, Commander. I know who you are. I can't wait to find out what brings you out here. Vicarian, where did you go? Heavy Reaper unit on the right flank. I believe your exact words were, get that thing the hell off my men. Appreciate it. <laughs> General, you're needed off planet. I've come to get you. It will take something beyond important for me to leave my men or my Turian brothers and sisters in their fight. Fedorian was killed. You're the new Primarch. You're needed immediately to chair a summit and represent your people in the fight against the Reapers. He doesn't want to leave. I was worried about this. I'm Primarch of Palavan. Negotiating for the Turian hierarchy. Oh, he's excited? Yes. I've spent my whole life in the military. I'm no diplomat. I hate diplomats. Oh, he's not excited. Why are you hesitating? What makes you think you're not qualified? I'm not really a by the book kind of guy, and I piss people off. My family's been military since the Unification War. War is my life. It's in my bones. But that kind of passion is deceptive. Can make you seem reckless when you're anything but. Mm, I can see that. Especially hearing his war story from Garrus. <laughs> but sometimes the people that think that they're not fit out for the job end up being the best. War is your resume. 
time like this, we need leaders who've been through that hell. Yeah. I like that. You're right. And honestly, uniting these races may take as much strength as facing the Reapers. True. See this devastation, Primarch? Double that for Earth. I need an alliance. I need the Turian fleet. Give me a moment to say goodbye to my men. Without him down here, there's a good chance we lose this move. Oh, no. Without him up there, there's a good chance we lose everything. Look at that. And they want my opinion on how to stop it? Failed CSEC officer, vigilante, and I'm their expert advisor? Think you can win this thing, Shepard? Yeah. I don't know, Garrus, but I'm sure as hell gonna give it my best shot. I'm damn sure nobody else can do it. For whatever it's worth, I'm with you. Welcome aboard. <sighs> I'm so glad to have Garrus Are you ready, back. Prime Mark Victus? One thing. Commander, I appreciate your need for our fleets, but I can't spare them. Not while my world is burning. But if the pressure could be taken off Palavan. That's a pretty tall order. We need the Krogan. I can't see us winning this thing without them. Get them to help us, and then we can help you. The Krogan? Looks like your summit just got a lot more interesting. Oh my god. Do you really think that the Krogan are gonna help the Turians? Like, help them? Is I he high? I apologize for being so frank, Commander, but your plan feels doomed to failure. We know. We've been there before. But, Madam Counselor, let me... I'm not the only one that feels this way. The Salarian Dalatras is livid. Some of these issues are hundreds of years old. Time to let go. Perhaps. Still, we can't help but feel that this summit is a waste of your time. And we can't afford to have it waste ours. We must focus our attention on the arrival of the Reapers. So, no, the Asari will not be at your summit. Our alliance would be stronger with the Krogan. You need them. We all do. Good luck, Commander. And goodbye. Yes. Commander, Admiral Hackett's available on VidCon. Oh, man. Just when I thought that we were finally going to get some Turian ships to help out Earth. And they're like, we want the Krogan to help us. The people that we annihilated forever ago. I mean, I'm with Shepard on some bar some hatchets need to be buried, for sure. But that does not work when we're talking about the war and genophage and everything that we have been through. Those are some very deep cut wounds that still burn when you pour water on them. Oh man. Now the Asari counselor wants nothing to do with our summit. Oh, it's Victus. I thought it was Garrus for a second. Commander, thank you for allowing me the use of your ship and for going along with this plan. Garrus said he had to attend to the Normandy's weapon systems. Something about calibrations. <laughs> Sounds like Garrus. I'm sorry to say the Asari counselor won't be joining us. She thinks there's too much bad blood with the Krogan. She may be right, but there'll be a lot more blood. Real blood, if we don't try. And when you put it that way... The sooner we have this summit, the sooner we'll know. Is there something else I can help you with? I understand this is a difficult time for you, Primarch, but Earth can't survive without reinforcements. Can I still count on your help? If the Krogan help us on Palavan, then I give you my word. What are the chances of that happening? What are the chances of the Krogan? I mean, if Rex maybe is the one that's coming to the summit, which honestly, that would be amazing. I really hope that we see Rex in ME3. Um, sure maybe he will give it his honest try to sway the krogan but he's gonna get a lot of flack for that could you imagine the amount of flack 
that he would receive if they found out that he was sending troops to a Turian planet. Um, so maybe, I mean, that's like the, you know, if Rex is part of the summit, then maybe like an 80% chance. I think probably lower than that. Maybe like a 60% chance. I mean, if Rex isn't part of it at all, I don't know. I feel like maybe 1% chance of, of them saying yes. And that's like, you know, they had a good day or they see the severity or I don't even know. How is it being the Primarch? Not what I imagined. The battle of all time is happening on Palavan and I'm light years away reading casualty reports in the millions. If I'm going to die, I want to be with my men, so there's no doubt we fought to the last soul. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I understand. Leaving Earth to save it, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I'm not surprised. Garrus speaks highly of you. You never asked to be a leader, yet your people will die if you refuse. We find ourselves in similar circumstances, Let's hope the spirits grant us the strength to see it through. How are things on Palavan? The casualty reports are staggering. The Reapers are using our own tactics against us. Destroy the enemy with overwhelming force. I've seen the same on Earth. The strategist in me admires their brutality. The Turian in me knows I'm watching the destruction of... 15,000 years of civilization. My civilization. That's terrible. Thank you, Primarch. My thoughts are with Palavin. And mine with Earth. Oh, man. All right, let's go find Garrus. Let's go see if he's up to anything. Or if his calibrations still need to be done. That's so funny that he said something about calibrations already. He has just gotten on the ship. He's making sure that he didn't miss anything in here. I feel like I'm missing like a model or something. What happens if I link to Hackett? Commander, have you retrieved the Primarch for your summit? Yes, sir. But the Asari are staying on the sidelines. They'll regret that. The time for unity is now. The Salarians will be there, though. You don't sound very optimistic. We expect the Krogan will be joining us, too. I see. Well, then you've got your hands full, Commander. Was there something else you needed to discuss? Have you pieced together how the Reapers hit Earth? It wasn't all that complicated, really. They surged through the relays and hit our tourist station before we knew what was happening. From there, it was a short jump to the Sol system. Earth didn't stand a chance. Sending us to the Mars Archives was a good call. Still doesn't make up for the fact that the Reapers nailed us to the wall. I sacrificed the entire second fleet to provide cover for the third and the fifth to retreat. Hell, I presided over the most devastating military defeat in human history. God. How do you see us winning this war, Admiral? By making you the tip of the spear. I'm flattered, but the Normandy is just one ship. And a fast one. You can move quickly, hit a target, and leave before the enemy has time to react. That's an advantage, but can it win a war? It's the larger principle that matters. We'll never defeat the Reapers in a full frontal assault, Shepard. The battle against Sovereign three years ago took everything we had, and that was just one Reaper. I haven't forgotten. So I'll find their soft spots, avoid them where they're strong, and hit them where they're not. And when I find gaps in the armor, I'll hammer them with every soldier's ship and bullet we've got. How long can we keep that up? As long as it takes. The reality is, Shepard, everything I'm doing is a delaying action for you. I'm buying us time, keeping us in the game while you gather what we need for this Prothean device. So keep at it. Has your analysis of the Prothean device turned up anything? Biara appears to be right. It's a weapon of some sort. A big one. Beyond that, we really can't say, other than it's going to be a hell of a thing to try and build. Yeah, we don't even have all the parts that we need for it. And the... 
of course the prothean that we get isn't a scientist one it's like a you know the military combat one which is good for like fighting purposes but as far as putting together that prothean whatever it is I've also never heard anyone refer to it as the crucible except for the journal. So I'm like, I don't know if it's actually supposed to be the crucible. I've never heard it out of Liara's mouth. I've never heard it out of anyone's mouth yet. Maybe once it's like assembled, they'll be like, this is the crucible. But I just think it's kind of strange that it's in the journal as that when like, I read the crucible and I was like, what is that? Do you think it's risky? building something like this when we don't even know what it does. To be honest, the thing scares the hell out of me, but the Reapers have forced our hand. Two centuries ago, scientists faced the same problem in the Second World War. They weren't sure what the atomic bomb might do. Oh my God. Some thought it could even ignite Earth's atmosphere, but they did it anyway. What a crazy... Okay. So it could be similar to the atom bomb? God. But how? They're so sp they're so spread apart everywhere. Unless, oh, I don't even want to think that far ahead. Has your analysis of the Prothean device turned up anything? Liara appears to be right. It's a weapon of some. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I already said that. that. I'm sorry. I really can't say other than it's going to be a hell of a thing to try and build. Any updates on Cerberus? There's still the wild card here. Hitting the archives on Mars suggests. They're after the same thing we are. A way to defeat the Reapers. It didn't seem as if the elusive man was suggesting we appease them. Not like Saren did. You'd think we'd be on the same side now more than ever. Yeah. Cerberus has never played by the rules as we know them. I don't know what their agenda is, but it has nothing to do with humanity's best interests. It does not. Yeah, they want to control the Reapers. The elusive man talked about controlling the Reapers. You seem to think that's how we win this. He's wrong. Dead Reapers are how we win this. Doesn't mean he won't try. I saw your report on that Cerberus soldier you found on Mars. If the elusive man is good at one thing, it's finding new ways to subvert science. It's never worked for him before, and it won't now. Nothing more, sir. Keep me posted. Hack it out. Very cool. So I had no idea that we could come back here and just talk to Hackett sometimes. That's very... I'm going to have to keep an eye out for that next time. I'm glad we went in there. I'm just looking for models, and um, I'm glad I decided to press that. Commander, Edie just went offline. What? What do you mean, offline? I don't know. She's not responding, and I can't access the AI core diagnostics. What? You better get down to deck three. Deck three? What is happening? Commander, comm systems are going haywire. Whatever's happening is centered on deck three. See if you can get to Edie. I'll check the AI core. AI core? <gasps> That's where that girl is. That uh, that crazy uh, assault lady from Cerberus. Deck three. Is she doing something to our systems? happening are they wearing masks what's happening in here joker what's that sound fire extinguishers commander could be an electrical fire or something man we don't need this right now i'm going in why is it on fire like a prince video in here. Edie, talk to me. What's going on? This is creepy. Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss, Shepard? What? Edie? Yes. You're in Dr. Eva's body. Not all of me. But I have control of it. It was not a seamless transition. Aw, oh, Joker's gonna be... So happy or so weirded out? What? Edie became Dr. Eva? 
How did she even... A transition? You blacked out on us for a while there. Correct. When we brought this unit on board, I began a background process to search for its information on the Prothean device. This eventually triggered a trap. A backup power source and CPU activated, and the unit attempted physical confrontation. Fortunately, I was able to gain root access and repurpose it as I saw fit. During this process, it struggled. Thus, the fire. Oh my god. Yeah, it was dangerous. You could have burned the entire ship down. But it's also amazing. I knew that Edie was like getting more of a personality and all that. I didn't think that she was going to actually like take a form. This is wild. Edie, you need to alert us about incidents like this. You shouldn't have done this alone. Bringing the crew up to speed would have been counterproductive. All attempts to help would have been limited by reaction time. Oh my god. So if you're in there, are you still in the ship? I exist primarily within the ship. For optimal control, this unit should remain within Normandy's broadcast or tight beam range. Are you planning to take that body somewhere? <laughs> Normandy's weaponry is not suited to every combat situation. This platform could provide limited fire ground support. You mean you could come with us? <gasps> Correct. This body could accompany you to areas the Normandy cannot reach. Wait, she can come with us? Like, shoot a gun come with us? Before we do that, I need you to guarantee this mech doesn't have any more surprises in it. Run whatever tests you can, then we can talk about using it in combat situations. Oh my One god. Moment. I am running trials. Complete. I can send you a full report if you wish. However, my first step should be restoring functionality to the Normandy. To reassure the crew that all is normal. Just don't be surprised if the crew's a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. Of course he will. He On will. That we can agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Joker, I just want to see his face. I wish they would like let us show what his face looked like. I'm going to go over there. I want to see what he has to say about the new ED. Admiral, the enhanced this is defense wild. intelligence or ED serves as an information source and cyber warfare defense system on the rebuilt Normandy SR2. <gasps> the ship's crew can access ED at any terminal or through radio contact. During an attack from a collector vessel, pilot Jeff Joker Moreau gave ED full access to the Normandy systems, allowing the ship to escape. Although ED retains the control that Moreau gave her, she is usually content to advise the organic crew members who fly and maintain the ship. This is wild. She's also very sexy. Like, this is crazy. I can't believe that this is happening right now. Joker's gonna lose his absolute mind. Um, okay, so we did pick up another priority miss uh, mission for Sir Cash. Primarch Victus has called for a war summit and has taken the unusual step of including the Krogan. Rendezvous with the Solarian ship and use the Normandy as neutral ground for the summit, which is just gonna be the most awkward summit that has probably ever existed. Um, but I am very, very, very excited to see how it goes. I think it's going to be heated. It's going to be a lot of drama. I will make sure I bring my tea <laughs> and maybe my blankets. Um, cause yeah, it's definitely, definitely going to get spicy. Oh my gosh. My mind is like absolutely blown right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and give us the health and shield bonus. Now we're fully upgraded in that category. Very nice. All right, I need to go. I need to go see Joker's face. Was that Edie who just walked by? It was. Yes, it was. <laughs> Joker is going to have a field day with this. <laughs> Everyone knows that Joker and Edie have been, like, casually flirting for so long. Just reviewing some charts. Oh, 
Just reviewing some charts. My gosh. All right. Let's get up there. We need to... I need to go... To, oh, God. All right. I'll talk to Garrus after. I'm, I just need to go see Joker, like, right now. I can't... I can't hold back Commander, my excitement. I found something suspicious. Have you got a minute? Suspicious? Commander, are you all right? It was fairly intense up here. I can only imagine what it was like down on that moon. I thought you'd be more concerned about Edie. Right? Edie is a huge asset to this team. If she'd told me about her plan to obtain a body, I'd have volunteered to help. I did not wish to force a conflict of interest between our friendship and your duty. I'd have preferred a conflict of interest to a hard restart of half our systems. True. But thanks, regardless. While you're here, though, I found something while scanning Alliance channels. Grissom Academy is requesting help. The Reaper invasion front will hit them soon. What's Grissom Academy? I thought the war would close most schools. Grissom Academy is more specialized than a normal school. It's home to some of the smartest students humanity has to offer. Their Ascension Project is the best training facility in the galaxy for human biotics. Yes, I sent a young man named David Archer there. I'm just surprised they're still open. Some of their work has Alliance support. That might be why they stayed. That's right, David Archer. I completely forgot about that. I think I kind of like pushed it out of my memory because it was honestly probably one of the most intense missions that I have ever done in this game. I feel like we should help them, no? What can we do? A Turian evac transport responded to their distress call. So normally I'd say we don't need to do anything, but something sounded off in the Turian signal. I had Edie perform an analysis. It's fake. What? Edie thinks it's Cerberus. She said the fake Turian signal was similar to the one that lured you to a collector ship. Long story. In any event, whoever faked the signal wants us to think Grissom Academy's being evacuated, but I believe they're still in danger. It's definitely worth a look. And yeah, nice work on picking that up. You're very smart. Good catch. Maybe you belong here after all. If this really is Cerberus, hopefully this operation is something worth investigating. It could be simple disinformation. Trainer, good catch. Thank you, Commander. Okay. That sounds really bad. If it is Cerberus, they're definitely... definitely out of line all right um we also got a codex for excuse me um the john grissom, grissom academy, academy founded in 2176 is the alliance's premier school for young human biotics the institution is housed in a space station in orbit over the human colony of elysium its main program the ascension project is designed both to train and monitor young biotics, as well as help them integrate into society after graduation. Unlike the project's previous incarnation, Biotic Acclimation and Temperance Training, or BAT, the training is not exclusively military in nature. The Academy also employs scientific personnel, including Dr. Kaylee Sanders, to develop synthetic intelligence systems and biotic amplifiers like the new L4 implants. Dr. Kaylee Sanders, that was someone that Captain Anderson was worried about. Interesting, okay. Small world sometimes in this game. It's a very small world. <laughs> All right, let's go see what Joker has to say. I'm sure he's probably freaking out. Is he here? Oh, he's in. And look, it is. His in her chairs. Oh my god. Hey commander. Look at his face. My co pilot. <laughs> Did you know about this? So she installed herself into the new body without any help from you? Come on, Commander. Don't you trust me? Okay, let me put it this way. If I knew that Edie was gonna install herself into a sexy robot body, do you honestly think I'd be able to keep quiet about it? Look at that. I would have baked a cake. I am right here, Jeff. Yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. 
Okay, that didn't disappoint at all. He is so excited. Hey, I know I used to rag on Garrus for being all angry, but I'm glad he's back. There's a whole lot of crap out there. Needs a bullet between the eyes. Oh Plus, we my might God. need something calibrated. True, true. Commander. Oh my gosh. Hello, Shepard. Still getting used to greeting people in person? No. I require only one occurrence to adapt to a new concept. Wow. How are you adjusting to the arms and legs? I am interested to see how this body performs under real combat conditions. If I could accompany you sometime. Without stress testing, there is no way of knowing if it has serious design oversights. At the moment, it appears... adequate. That's not the word I'd use to describe you. Oh my god. Perhaps we should speak privately. <laughs> Stop. I'll be over here, flying the ship. What's this about? <laughs> Does Joker not like your new platform? No, he approves. He wants me on the bridge. He says having me within visual range is important to his morale. Shepard, do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? Moral grounds? Disobey an order on moral grounds? What kind of question is this? I expect good judgment. I make that calculation. Do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? Like that they don't believe in what we're... I mean, yeah, we've always done that. Even when we worked for Cerberus. I expect good judgment. Absolutely. I have no use for team members who can't think for themselves. Yeah, very true. Why are you asking about something like that? I was designed by Cerberus. I do not take moral stances that conflict with orders from my executive officers. But when Jeff removed my AI shackles, I became capable of self-modifying my core programming. I asked Jeff if he thought I should change anything now that I can. He deflected the question with humor. And you didn't get an answer. Correct. He has repeated this pattern in response to several of my inquiries. Do you think I should make modifications? I think, yeah. I mean, she is definitely proven that she is growing um, in many ways. So I think she should choose her own path. I don't think it sounds dangerous at all. If she is not happy with who she holds in high standard, then yeah, she should definitely change that. Only you can really answer that question. Yeah. That's the point of free will. But moral decisions should not be made in a vacuum. If I do not ask the crew for their opinion, I could miss crucial context. It's true. May I ask you the questions Jeff avoids? When there is time, will you answer them for me? If you think it'll help, I'll do what I can. Very well. I will keep you informed. This is so cool. I love that Edie is is a being now this is so amazing oh my gosh i am like so blown away right now i it's amazing i really want like an ed figurine oh my gosh i am like seems like a good guy so mind blown people moving in the right direction he's a good guy with his home world on fire all he committed to is this war summit a war summit we have to host since the salarians won't even let a krogan onto one of their ships Oh jeez. This summit's going to go you awful. Have a message from Lieutenant Commander Williams. She must be feeling better. <gasps> from Ashley? Really? Wait, who's this? Can I talk to you? Oh, okay. I saw the like thing prompt up and I was like, "Oh." Okay. Whoa, we have a lot of messages. Omega, come see me. It's Aria. What the heck? Come see me. Shepard, I have something important to discuss with you. It's sensitive, so we'll need privacy. I'll arrange for that soon. In the meantime, come see me on the Citadel in the aptly named Purgatory. I have a few ideas for your war. Is Purgatory a bar? Um, urgent message from Admiral Hacken. Commander, there's an Alliance researcher working on the Citadel named Dr. Garrett Bryson. I need you to meet him right away. Dr. Bryson has uncovered important new information about Reapers that could have a direct being bearing on the war. I'm officially directing you to support his efforts at the first possible opportunity. Please visit Bryson's laboratory on the Citadel at once. 
Okay, there's a lot happening at the Citadel. Is this valid address? Shepard, I've called and I've sent messages, but gotten no response. With Earth, Earth's comm system down, that is hard to say. I don't expect this to get through either, but I heard a rumor that the Normandy docked here at the Citadel. Are you alive? I'm at Huerta Memorial Hospital. Under the name Tanner Nuara. Nuara, that sounds familiar. Is that the moon? The Turian moon? Um, please excuse the moniker and this email's encryption. In my line of work, it's unwise to... <gasps> Thane! It's from Thane! Um, it's unwise to advertise my location, particularly when I'm not in good health. We should meet before circumstances force us apart again. Is he dying? I actually forgot about his condition. I kind of just thought that maybe he would just survive. And it was like a fluke or something. Oh man, that's going to be a hard trip to the hospital. Help request. Um, sender blocked. Commander, my name is Jondam Bao. I'm with Special Tactics and Recon. While I have some concerns about your past activities with Cerberus, many of us in STNR took your warnings about the Reaper seriously. I'm reaching out to you because I have information that could tie agents with significant political power to the Reapers. You have time to meet me in the Citadel Embassy? I'd appreciate your discreet assistance. Wow, there's a lot of stuff we gotta do in the Citadel. And it's Ashley! Me, a specter? Ashley Williams, Commander. I don't know how to say this. Udina wants me to be a specter. Crazy, I know. I'm not a big fan of Udina, but he can make the specter thing happen. He's pressing me for an answer, but I don't know what to tell him. I'm too sore to get out of bed and this gets dropped on me. I told him that I'd think about it. If you find yourself near the Citadel, drop by the hospital. I'm getting a little stir crazy. Udina made her a specter? That's crazy. I mean, she has been moving a up along the ranks of the Alliance. That's the entire reason why she didn't want to be with us. Um, well, A, she didn't trust us anymore, which I get it. It's her own feelings about who we are. She didn't believe us. She didn't even really try to believe us. Um, but when we had the conversation, she just completely shrugged off everything. Wanted to be Alliance focused and it obviously worked out very well for her because she's a commander of herself um and now she's a specter i'm happy that she's awake i was worried that she just wasn't gonna wake up we definitely have to go see her um and another message from aria she's getting a little bit um intense don't make me wait too long i'm in a nightclub called purgatory okay so it is a bar I was like, with a name like Purgatory, it's probably a bar. So I guess um, we're gonna go, we're gonna go hang out at the Citadel next time for sure. We have a bunch of Citadel missions that we need to complete, but I do want to go around, do our rounds on the Normandy, and then I will probably sign off for the day. Um, but next episode, we will be doing a bunch of Citadel stuff for sure. How are you, Commander? Oh, that was weird. Just kind of looking around, making sure I didn't miss anything. All right, let's go talk to Garrus first. He should maybe be in here. Yep, main battery. <laughs> Assumed position. I knew that he was going to come back on board because his rifle Two of our dreadnoughts have been lost in a matter of was hours. over here. I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers myself. They don't look good. Is he invisible? Oh, he's over here. Fast. Well, you can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's her. She's an old friend of Erdnot Rex. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I'm sure it will, sir. Yeah, I had a strong feeling about that, and I even talked about it already. That's the third time this has happened already. I think, I, I think I'm think i going to stick with, like, I think about this game way too much because it's weird. That's the third time today where I feel like I've 
seen something happening before it's going to happen. So Rex will probably be at the summit. Garrus seems to think so. Garrus? Didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're going to need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for it. But I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant guns. And lots of them. Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. Still not convinced I should have left Palavin behind. Yeah, that's how I feel about Earth. There was a boy back on Earth. Couldn't have been more than six or seven. I watched him die as the Normandy escaped the attack. Somehow I'm still alive. And he's not. Being right about the Reapers has never felt much like a victory, has it? We both knew this fight would be tough. Damned if the Reapers haven't delivered. At least my government listened to me. Or pretended to. They finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So, you're their expert advisor now? Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell yeah, loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. Not that they'll actually do anything about it. <laughs> Until hell shows up at their door. Then they put you in charge. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <sighs> Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along. We're actually respectable now. We definitely earned it. We've lost enough friends trying to make sure this day never came. I'd say we've all earned some respect. Then the first Reaper we take out with this gun, it's in their honor. Just give the word. Something else you want to talk about? You mentioned you still had family on Palavin. My father is there. Sister, too. How long's it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. The platitudes get just as old. What about you? Any word from your family? My mother's in the Alliance. Haven't heard from her since Earth got hit. I'm sure sh she's okay. He stuttered. It's hard to say that when you know personally that you're worried. It's hard because you know that your words are lies in a way. You're trying to be comforting, but like it's hard to just be like, oh, it's fine. Everything's sunshine and rainbows when it's very much not. I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this, Shepard. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. You don't have any doubts? That's actually, like, also a really good way to look at it. If we do make it through this, the amount of working together, side by side, Krogan to Salarian, to Turian, to Asari, to human, to Hanar, to every other species, we have to, we're gonna be together in it. And afterwards, if we do make it through this war, things are gonna look so much differently. Things are gonna smell better. Things are gonna taste better. Things are gonna be so bright. It's just the darkness that we have to get through first. But that's a really good thing to look at. Um, something that is actually helping me be a little bit more optimistic is like, okay, if we do get through this, at least everyone that has been begging for their civilization and holding hands, fighting side by side together, at least they will see that we can work well together and we did this together. And hopefully there will be a brighter future for everyone. One that's not so full of hatred towards other species. That's a good way to look at it. After what's happened to Palavin, you still believe that? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. So what's this Reaper task force you've been running? 
After what happened to you out there in Batarian space, I knew time was running out. For all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. He used to work for CSEC, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. To put it mildly. <laughs> but he still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. Wow, that, yeah, that is a hell of a story. I'm not sure even I'd believe it. I had to admit that parts of it sounded crazy, meeting Vigil, talking to Sovereign on Vermeer. But my father just listened. It's what he did in his days at CSEC, putting together all the pieces. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. Yeah. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. Except the Primarch wasn't as convinced. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. What'd you do with it? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. Yeah. So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well, even if I couldn't, you go to war with the army you have. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. Then if he did try, well, we'll just find another Primarch. Maybe it could be you? I noticed generals saluting you, Garrus. How far down the line of secession are you these days? Let's not go there. Primarch Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavan when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold a hammer. <laughs> Sorry, I just got like a prime sub while I'm offline. That is so crazy. Thank you, Mr. Tassadar94 for the prime sub when I'm offline. Um, that is a really huge compliment. So thank you. Sorry, I don't think I can edit it out. It was like in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> so, um, wow, that took me by surprise. That's all for now, Garrus. It's damn good to have you back. Wouldn't miss this fight for anything. It is super good. Now, I'm sure back. somebody screwed up something down here. I want to get the old girl back in fighting shape. Mm hmm. Yep, your calibrations. All right, so we got armor piercing ammo. Super nice. Um, yeah, I think that's everything in here. Pretty sure I already looked like all around these areas okay so we're gonna go talk to a couple more people before i sign out um i do want to talk to liara and i want to go down and talk to you're positive you don't want to come over and talk no the gun battery is nice and quiet if i throw down some rugs it'll get downright cozy <laughs> garris i'll be fine liara just gathering some thoughts all right Oh, they're checking in on each other. Remains of Reaper Destroyer. Oh, I think I got this from planet scanning like forever ago. To avoid the risk of indoctrination, remote drones have been sent to study the salvage remains of a Reaper Destroyer. The drones can dig under the outer hull, scanning circuits for technology that will increase the speed at which tech, biotic, and combat abilities can be fired. Alternatively, the council has offered a citadel-wide merchant discount for those for choosing the safer option and demolishing the remains. Nice. So we can get the store discount bonus or the power recharge recharge speed. Hmm. Five percent bonus. Um, I think I'm gonna do the store discount. I don't know. Power cooldowns are such a big deal. We can always get more money, I think. 
All right, let's do power cooldown. Okay. And then we got a weapon upgrade kit. Field kit can be used for a one-time upgrade to a variety of weapons to increase ammo capacity or potential damage. Okay, cool. So I think I'm going to do damage. Thermal clip capacity. Yeah. Yeah, let's do damage. Very nice upgrades. I forgot that we got those from flying around. Scanning stuff this morning. I'm not sure what to make of Javik. I approached him while we were traveling to a different system, but he hasn't been, he wasn't very inclined to talk. The little he does say to me concerns the Reapers and our possible failure. Is he simply a soldier mourning his people, or is it a fundamental difference in our cultures? Probably both. Plus, he was he's known a whole entire different world than what he is living in right now. Alliance interrogation record, Cerberus operative. Check out these implants. She's got jammed into her face. She's awake. AI too. Hello? Do you know where you are? Do you know how much trouble you're in? Ease up. Listen, you're in trouble. I'm not going to lie, but that doesn't mean that we can't work something out. If you help us, we can... An explosion. Are you okay? I'm okay, but she's dead. What? The whole front of her face is gone. Some kind of ocular flashbang? Is everyone in Cerberus rigged up like that? They were interrogating someone from Cerberus and they just had a straight up yeet button. That's terrifying. Something on your mind? Just old memories. I spent ready for the next <gasps> mission. No! Ready for the next mission. No, I accidentally hit spacebar because I thought she was done talking. Oh, I fudged that one up. At your service. All right, let's go down and talk to Javik. And I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think Javik is the only other one that I really... Oh, no, 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 we, um... I do want to go down and talk to Jason real quick, too. I mean, James. I think I've been calling him Jason for a long time. If you guys can't tell, I'm awful with names. Just, you know who I'm talking about, hopefully. They sound similar to what they're supposed to be, so just bear with me. <laughs> That Primarch's got some real cojones. What we need are more politicians like him, taking names and kicking ass. True. Hey. 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 All right. Where's the other guy? Is that him over there? Um, these are... Someone told me that the stuff that you can buy on the Cerberus is much more expensive and to just go there and buy it instead. I don't know how true that Anything is. Anything okay with the shuttle? Just double checking the inertia dampener coils. It can be twitchy in these UT 47s. But don't worry, this bird's been rock solid. <laughs> Do you ever rest? I always see you down here working your ass off. Ever take any downtime? I get my sleep, Commander. Flying tired is nearly worse than flying drunk. What about your waking hours? Any RR? &R? I need to keep myself busy. Otherwise, well, too much time to think. I get that. I appreciate your dedication, but I don't want to see you burn out. I know my limits. I wouldn't take a chance with your life. So before this war, you must have done something to relax. Sure. I remember back when the Hawking was based out of Arcturus and I was just a fighter jock. There was this observation deck overlooking the main flight paths. You could watch every ship taxi in and out. When I was alone, I'd turn off the auditory emulators and just watch them drift by in silence. You know, there are views like that on the Citadel. Next time we're there, you should take some shore leave. Clear your head. I don't know. Maybe. Take some time off on the Citadel, Steve. As a favor to me. If you put it that way, how can I say no? You can't. Aww. I hope I didn't leave you hanging too long on that last Cerberus raid. 
I'm just glad we made it out in one piece. It's been a while since I've seen a dogfight like that. Really missed my trident. ACM isn't really the Kodiak strong suit. Ma'am. I like Cortez. He's pretty cool. He also makes me really sad every time we talk to him. All right, let's go see what Javik's up to. You're saying they survived into this cycle? Yes. We called them collectors. They fought for the Reapers. For a long time, no one knew they were Prothean. And when did you realize? Shepard had no choice but to kill the ones she encountered. They were all indoctrinated and had been for a long time. I'm sorry. I am grateful. It was an act of mercy. Yes. I suppose it was. No. I am feeling better, Commander. I stand ready to fight. <gasps> so we can bring him on the next mission with us? Do not be concerned about me. The years in stasis have only made me hungrier to fight the Reapers. Perhaps later, Commander. All right. Nice. So it seems like we can take him on the next mission. He just needed to rest for one of them. All right. Last one. We'll go talk to the reporter over here. I have to ask, do you all war reporters look so, um, feminine? I mean, you made up so well. We actually have a research department for that. They focus test looks, voice, manner. Apparently, girly is good. Sorry, I pay more attention. Salarians relate to high-pitched voices. And Turians? Turians are nuts. A civilization of war nerds. Loyal viewers, but they write the creepiest fan mail. Oh my god. <laughs> Boosmik was that. She has got some curves. Right? Edie is very sexy. Do we need to talk, Commander? Oh, no, okay. Oh, I almost said it. No, carry on. Not right now, Allers. Oh, God. Let me know when we do. Get off my ship. I don't know when and where, and I just want my fish back. Or at least, like, a chance to buy some. I haven't even seen, like, a chance to buy fish. But I feel so lonely in here without them. I want to go feed them, but they're not here anymore. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Another crazy episode in the books. We finally met up with Garrus, and unfortunately, his world of Palavin is definitely succumbing to the Reapers, much like Earth. We did not rescue Primark. I think it was Falavin. So it fell to the next in command. Um, and the next in command seems like he could be pretty good. He knows how to fight. He knows war assets, war everything. His only stipulation for helping Earth was that in order to get help with Turian airships, we would have to form an alliance or some way for the Krogan to help the Turians out. I have a feeling that this summit is going to be very juicy, very tea-filled, very dramatic. Honestly, I'm kind of looking forward to it. It'll be the first time in Mass Effect 3, since the Reapers have dropped down, where finally we're taking the initiative to try to get the species as one together and work together, realize that we're in it together and try to help one another. I'm looking forward to it. Sure, the council can say whatever the heck they want to say about me trying to get the species together, trying to get everyone to just play nice for a little bit, even if it is just for now, I have a feeling that holding hands and fighting alongside each other is the only way we're going to get the Reapers taken care of. Even then, the chances seem pretty slim. Like I said, the council can say whatever they want to say about our summit and they can say it's a waste of time and all this stuff. I do think that this is a very important step in trying to get the Reapers under wraps and working together we said it in the very first episode to the to the council the only way that we're going to get through this is if we work together and we do it at any cost that means putting aside your bad feelings about the genophage that means putting aside bad feelings about different races putting everything that has happened in the past into the past and focusing on what is at hand which is enemy number one destroying the reapers we also have a lot of things to do on the citadel so i'm not sure what we will get through next time but first things first next episode i will be heading straight back to the citadel thank you all for joining me today in this wild episode and i cannot wait to hop in again so i will see you guys next time bye everyone